Favorite lineup change here today. Yeah. BB Shea in, Biggie out. Mm. What's up, Dave? B. Biggie has the crud, as he's told us for the last few days. He said it laid on heavy. Laid on heavy last night. He used the word fever. Mm -hmm. Got the fever. Don't want that. Threw him for a loop. I just texted him to say, can you still review the movie Scrooged today in uh, Garbage Time? So we'll see how he responds to that. That's always good. So sick day, not sick day. (laughs) Just put it on. Yeah, I I thought, yeah, for fun. Let's just throw it out there for fun. Uh, I don't expect him to. He was going to watch the movie last night. He'd never seen it before. But it completely throws off the grid if he doesn't do it today. Because we only have 12 days to do these 12 movies. And we're under time constraints, so it's I just double him, up. Yeah, I told him to do it. I told him. I told, you told him to do it. No, I said, can you call in and and review Scrooge? So we'll see. Mm-hmm. My guess is he will say, "Oh, I haven't even watched it." And which I'll reply, "Well, you have two hours. Well, get go, started go ahead. now. <laughs> go ahead. Is ticking. Go ahead and do that." Or you could fake it like that movie review you did at uh, college. I did. In college, I faked a movie review on paper in the newspaper. I saw, I didn't see Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and wrote a poor review of it based on what I had seen in Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and 2. And so uh, that lays heavy on me all these years later. Is this one of those things where, like, on your deathbed, you will confess? Well, I mean, you confess it already, I but have, I mean, make it good, like write a retraction. I, what I need to do is watch the movie and write a review and send it to the Watauga this Democrat. This is what I should have written. This, this is what you should have printed. Is, print this, go back. <laughs> 30 years and print this, this is what I should have written. Didn't yeah. some guy confess that, to his daughter that he was a, <clears throat> a bank robber? Yes, recently. Is that accurate? I mean, do people do any fact-checking and say, yeah, that bank was robbed yeah. and he was the yeah, guy? Yeah, they did, and that's real. We had her audio. I need to find it. She she said she was sitting there with her mother, and the, the father knew he only had a few months to live. He had been diagnosed with cancer, and they knew it was near the end. And he told her, oh, by the way, I want to get this off my chest before I die. I stole, I believe it was $219,000 from a bank under a different name 40 years ago. And he went through the money quickly, apparently, and then got his life right, was never caught, and married the woman that became his wife and had the kids. He got away with it. And totally got away with it. And then died a few months later. Yeah. And after he died. Oh, he's she, dead now. He's dead. And she went back and checked the story, and it completely checks wow. out. And they never caught the person who did it. And he said, I did it under this name. And, you know, this is here's the woman talking about it was spring of 2021. And one afternoon, my dad just looked over at my mom and I as we were watching NCIS and said, ladies, just in case it comes up after I pass, I had to change my name when I moved here. No one can find out because the authorities are probably still looking for me. But just so you know, and he confessed to Robbie. Blake. <laughs> so if you if you're the daughter. Mm-hmm. Is that legally your name? Hmm. Hmm. I I don't think he legally changed his name. (laughs) Although, if you... But in in his time, he had to like produce a social security number and that kind of. Don't you to get you a job? Can buy those, right? But what, is that what he did? I, I mean, don't at know. that time. Now again, he robbed the bank back in the seventies when he was much much when he was very young. But do you have to? Do you have to buy a fake social security number? Then maybe you, you can should. buy almost anything, yeah. right? Passports. I guess. I guess. She, well, obviously, the the daughter said she was surprised. And the first thing I saw was headlines that said "Vault Teller Robs Bank," and then "50 Year Hunt" or something. Or they'd been looking since the seventies. And I thought, oh my god, my life is a lifetime movie. And that's true. Mm-hmm. She, uh, the guy was a bank teller and got away with an inside job and, uh... and stole the money from the bank. They never caught him because he fled, changed his name. They never found but him. But didn't leave the country. Did not leave the country, no. Stayed. He was not, he was a few states away, I believe. But, of course, he and the mother, or she and the mother were dumbfounded. Never said a word about it until after he died. And he married the woman after mm-hmm. he had committed the crime. Yes, long, mm-hmm. a few years after. He got his life straight, but used the money to do it. You know, got a job, lived off the money until he could. That's not what Biggie's doing today, because you know he's. <laughs> no. I mean, he mentioned crippling. I mean, that would it's a kind of an active crime. But yesterday he mentioned his crippling debt more than once. Well, he did. He said, <laughs> he said that a few times. I think it crippled him. <laughs> this, this, she's talking about how much he got. He essentially blew through all that money by the late seventies. When he met my mom, the money was gone. He was living in a modest apartment and had a job. And growing up, 
I mean, we weren't wealthy. We we were just paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. I had great parents and I had a dad who I thought was the typical suburban dad who drives you to school and comes to every soccer game and every play. And really, he's a wanted fugitive. Like, my dad is a fugitive. Now, that woman's name is... Oh, that's a- the title. Yeah. yeah. Her, her name is Ashley Randell. Is it? Well, <laughs> her father was Tom Randell. And his real name, though, was Ted Conrad. And Ted Conrad became Tom Rendell yeah. and completely changed everything. He told her that with when he had six weeks to live in 2021. And he did die Crazy. six weeks later. Wow. Is the bank still in business, I wonder? You know, banks... I doubt right. it. It's for, for sure it have been bought. They by, fold and yeah, get bought. And bought by different Go banks. after, you know, how much money's in his estate. The money he stole was $219,000. That's the equivalent of $1.8 million today. Dang. The bank was in Cleveland, Society National Bank, and they were in Indiana. So he moved not that far away. That's not that not far. Not that far. <laughs> and uh, crazy. He's a not much of a dragnet, I guess, not around Cleveland. A stunner. Can they the retroactively man. get that money? Like, or is that kind of? Is that like what I want to know? You know, is that done? Go after him as a state. Or maybe. is there a statute? Yeah. Did he have life? Did he have a million dollar life insurance policy? Well, they've never convicted him. And how are they going to do that now? All we have but, now I mean, is that he, 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 he could be lying. You know, he could. Truly. He could have read this story and said, "I did this." You know. Now if and I, now he's dead. So how can they go after and prove without right, a shadow? Never convicted. Of it? Yeah, he was not convicted mm-hmm. of the crime. So I bet you they cannot go after that money. We should ask Lisa Lanier that she's joining mm-hmm. us today. Yeah, her dockets as full as a tick. It is. I mean, I'm telling you, well, just keep throwing stuff at her. I just keep throwing stuff at her. But that is a good story there about that woman who found out that her father robbed a bank all those many years ago. Uh, another couple of things here. This is one Chris Dim gave me yesterday. He said to me, now this is from online. You know, I'm always reading things. I don't know what the terms are. Yesterday, uh, I mentioned that my son said to my wife, and I'd never heard this term before. He was, uh, he's home now for the holidays. Just for he's, he's going back today, but he'll be back in a few days. He's got to take one more exam. And he said, uh, as he was walking upstairs, he said, I'm about to go get a shower. Why don't you chef me up some mozzarella sticks? <laughs> to his mother. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen her. Oh man! I bet her blood pressure went up. Well, you guarantee it did. But uh, chef but me up. Why don't you chef me up some mozzarella sticks? It's not terribly hurtful when you say chef me up. No, I, no, I, I like no, it. No, but but the pert- impertinence of it all. Correct. Oh, it's a slap too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was. Why don't you chef me chef up me some up. mozzarella? You're sticks? not busy. Yeah. Well. In fairness, we were not busy. We were sitting, <laughs> doing our usual. And did she chef him up? And reading? She declined to chef him up some mozzarella sticks. She said, get off your behunkus and chef it up yourself if you Easy want. Easy with the language in the house. I know. So Chris Dim says, what is CFW? Chris Dim has it. Chris Kelly does not. Do you know the term? Do you know, yeah, I, I, I learned it yesterday. CFW. Dave, you don't have it. I don't have it. Chris Dim has it. What do you think? B.B. Shea, B.B. Shea uh, he doesn't have it. No, he don't have it. He's a crotchety person. No, 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 no. That, uh, yeah, I thought, what could that, I thought the F was probably crotchety F something you can't say. I, I don't know. C, F. Is it, is it medical? It is not medical. Mm-mm. Oh. No. Hmm. I don't know. Child-free wealth. You have child-free wealth because you don't have to worry about putting the kids through college or feeding them or anything like that. Oh, well, yeah. I'd never heard that term before. I hadn't either. Child free well, so that's a difference between Chris Dim and myself. He has mm-hmm. it. I don't. I'm still paying for these children. Can I ask you a question about uh, you mentioned your son Kelly has one final that he has to take in person at his mm-hmm. first semester of college. Yeah. How quickly are uh, finals turned around, and will he get his grades? That's a good question because so far he took one yesterday. Remember that one I told you? Yes. They said the you, endless exam. You yeah. can take it as many times as you want. You have, I believe, it's about seventy-two hours to take it. We're in that window, and you can take it anytime you want. So, with and your you, notes in front of notes you. in front of you, and access to all the notes on the computer and so forth. Open book. So he takes it the first time three days ago. Okay, so I guess the window's probably closed yesterday. So he took it three days ago. He came downstairs and just took the exam. I said, "How'd you do?" He goes, 40. <laughs> <laughs> Out of, I, that's what I said, out, he goes, out of 100, bro. And I said, 40 out of 100? And you you had access to all the notes. He's like, I lost the notes. I don't know. I don't know. Lost the notes? And I said, you're going to take it again? He goes, I'm straight. That gave me a C. He's like, that, that, I, I did so well in the class, otherwise it gave me a C. I said, you are, you are not straight, and you are to take the exam again. So the second time he took it, he came back and he goes, much better. I said, what'd you All get? All right. 
59. He's up to a 59. <laughs> I what an improve. That's a yeah. 50% improvement. I did. Well, that yeah. is much He didn't better. know it. but No, no, he would never be able to tell you that. His mother said, you go, but you get your bahunkus back up those stairs and you take that exam again. He goes, bro, I'm chill. I've got a B minus now. I'm up to a B minus for the whole class. And I said, we can do better. We can aim higher than that. So mm. he's, he took it again last night. I don't know what he got last night. Okay. And he may have one more chance today. But the first two attempts were not as good as I thought they were going to be. No, that's that's uh, the first figure was surprising. Yeah. To me as well. Yeah. Weren't you surprised by that? Mm. 40. And I said, out of, <laughs> he said, 100. And I said, that's not going to, I was jarred by it. My wife had me get the Chardonnay out of the uh, refrigerator a little early. She's watching you bring that wine bottle. And my, yeah. I started cuffing. Blood pressure. <laughs> blood, blood, pressure blood pressure up. That, that cuff ain't going to work Did on you that. See, this, I saw this story too. Uh, you, maybe we can, uh, unless you've seen it, you, could, you, don't, you can excuse yourself. But I saw a headline earlier this week about, it may be great inflation, but we're talking about at the Ivy Leagues, Harvard and Yale. Mm -hmm. Would you care to guess the percentage of students who get, or, or I, I'm not sure I don't know the terms, but I guess it's like the percentages of grades that are A's at Harvard and Yale currently. Percentage of A's? Yes. I'll say 50%. 50%. I'll say, I'll say at, half of the, but, but the By the way, the numbers are almost identical. Okay. All right. I'll say each uh, each of them have about 50% A's. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Dave? I think lower. Do you? A's? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'll go with like 30, mm -hmm. 35. Okay. All 50 right. and a 35. What do you think, BB? Yeah, I don't know. For Harvard, I was going to say a lot higher. I was going to say like 80, 85 what? maybe. I, I'm, I'm leaning more toward you because I think yeah. once you get into Harvard, you've got, yeah. you've got it. You know, Special you, people get into Harvard. Right. So what is the answer? 80. You're right. Yeah. Okay. 80%. Shay. 80%. So you get there. I think you get there. You, a, you've got a lot going for you. Yeah. And B, I think you work so hard to keep that edge, to be the best at Harvard. You but know? there are, you know, th there are some things that come along with this. I guess some baggage mm -hmm. is in the fact that in our day, and perhaps, and your son's attitude might be a refreshing change, mm -hmm. saying, I'm straight, I got a B minus, mm -hmm. because at Harvard and Yale, a B is seen as failing. So when someone gets a yeah. B in a yeah. class at Harvard, yes. they contact the professor, what what can I do? What that happened makes sense. here? Why, do I, why didn't I get an A? Anything other than an A is a failure. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. That's, so I, that's so how driven we, those kids are. Yeah. yeah. My the culture is changing. My son, when I say to him, like even when we go to the gym together, they'd always throw these things out there like, here's the mile challenge. Beat what you did last time. Here's the row. Beat what you did last time. And I'd say, come on, we got to be. He's like, bro, I'm chill. That's you. That's not me. <laughs> He'd say, that's your world. That's not my world. I said, don't you want to better yourself? Nah. nah. I'm, he's, I'm straight. That's what he always does. <laughs> it's like, don't you want to reach for that golden ring, that pinnacle? No, he never wants to do it. He's always like, yeah, tell him be careful. He'll be chefing up mozzarella. Well, right, somewhere. yeah. He might, he might really be a professional chefing chef up, up mozzarella. You want to chef up that's, a real, that's a real possibility. <laughs> Here's another difference between Chris Dem and myself. Now, this one, uh, he, again, Chris Dem does have CFW, child free wealth. I do not. I, this is such a, and we've done this for years. This is exactly how questions are answered here. An, e an email from a P1 listener who uh, I, is a troll. I mean, he emails us from time to time, always angry about something. Mm -hmm. Okay, always. And he was already mad about something, and he wrote... It doesn't even matter what the topic is. doesn't even is. matter, nope. And he wrote, I found a really good show you guys should be more like. It's called Simon Says. It's way more professionally done. All right, that's his whole email. So I wrote him back and said... Please give us another chance. We're trying the best we can. We do so much. We try. We've had some sickness in the program. We've had recently. some illness. I'll I'll work harder. I'll try what better. Can I do? Okay, what can I do? My to blood make pressure's you, on the way down. My blood. I'm doing my blood pressure, and I didn't hear back from him. Chris Dem. Wrote back. Simon says, "Eat a bag." <laughs> 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 that's that child free wealth. Okay. It opened your yeah. mind to other that was I, That was teed up. I looked at it. <laughs> that is teed up. <laughs> Again, I took a paragraph. A paragraph of, is there anything we can do? We'd certainly love to win your support back and your loyalty. We are so pleased with it. Simon says... Eat a bag. <laughs> he wins. He always he always wins those. You know, there's a, a, a this is one an argument going on today in the state of Iowa. I was surprised by this. Apparently, the state house of Iowa lets different groups put up Christmas displays, 
And this year, for the first time... Is uh, there like a hall of yes, holiday displays? Yes, there's a hall of holiday displays. So I'm, I'm assuming there's a manger and a menorah. Correct. If you're into Kwanzaa, they have that. Okay. Uh, of course, Hanukkah, which begins today. Uh, Actually, Hanukkah. last night, I think. Was it last night? Okay. okay. So Hanukkah is upon us. Eight of those. Eight crazy nights. You're crazy. <laughs> At the Iowa State House this year, they have allowed a display from the Satanic Temple. And the group has said and won that if Christmas displays like a tree can go up at the Capitol and these up the manger and these other displays and are celebrated, that their group should be allowed to as well. And this satanic group says we have just as much a right as anybody else. Lucian Greaves, the co-founder of the satanic temple, says for those that don't like it, eat a bag. We're here. <laughs> this is it. We're going to relish the opportunity to be represented in a public forum. We don't have a church on every street corner. My feeling is that if people don't like our displays in public forums, they don't have to engage with them. They don't have to view them. Okay. Can I ask Kelly what they put up? They have put up a ram's head covered with tiny mirrors on a manica cloaked in red red clothing. Ah, okay. Bal. You're, you're, you're familiar with this. <laughs> Good old Bal. Uh, uh, that's it. That's right. B-A-A-L if you want to look at it. Is up. there an apostrophe in the middle? Uh, only I think only the Hebrew version. <laughs> there is a woman named Shelley Flockhart who is part of a Christian prayer group that has gathered to pray near it every night and try to pray it away. And she is asking that they remove it. One, I hope people realize spiritual warfare is real. That there are evil, satanic forces that are trying to infiltrate our state. It's a very dark, evil force. And I truly hope people know how to battle that. So she says, don't look at it. Stay away from it. Pray look, on it. Pray on it and look at the manger. What but it's not promoting... What's it promoting? Just Satan worship? Yes. But it's not promoting like hate speech or no, it's just Satan worship or, or, or Satan. against a, a group of people. No, they say they it's uh, it's they they have as much right to be there, and I guess the courts agreed with them that they have as much right to be yeah, there as anybody. Yeah. If it's else. a government building, that's usually the rule. Yeah, I should throw it at least Lanier, but we got it's so freedom of religion. religion. It's freedom yeah. of religion. That's yeah. the thing. It's freedom yeah. of religion. Now I'm as much against it as anybody else. Sure. Yeah. But what you have to do is go and look away from it. And pray on it. And I don't think the Church of Satan promotes hate speech, not to back them up or anything like that. But I think that's a common misconception. Well, I don't know about it. So yeah. I don't think I've heard from people that it's really not what you think. And I'm not trying to be an advocate for it. I'm really not. But yeah, you've said that twice. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but like, I don't We're know. I, I've, I've yeah. spoken with people about it. And apparently mm. it's 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 uh, it's kind of mis, mis, misunderstood. Really? They yes. preach most of the like, love of nature and that's, this and It's that. a lot of that. Although Correct. that's kind of Wicca. Correct. That's kind of yeah. Wiccan. It reminded me of... Uh, Warren Hutcherson, who is such a funny comedian, and we have not played this yet this year, when his father went to a different religion. In 1969, let me just tell you this about me. 1969, my father joined the Nation of Islam, which, you know, was great for him, but just screwed me out all the holidays. <laughs> so, six years old, there was no Christmas. I had to fast for a month. I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> that was wrong, you know. And my grandmother's a born-again Christian, so she freaked out. You know, she just said, the baby can't have no Christmas? <laughs> what you mean that child can't have a Christmas? It's Christmas time. <laughs> oh, no, baby, I don't care what your father's doing. I'm going to take you to see Santa Claus. You know? And she'd take me to the mall to see Santa, you know. I'd sit in Santa's lap. So what do you want for Christmas, little boy? My father's in the corner. Tell him you want your freedom. <laughs> you got some freedom in that bag, fat man? <laughs> My father's job apparently was to find all the plots against the black race, no matter how cleverly hidden. <laughs> he could find them. And he pointed them out to me and looked at me like I was stupid for not seeing them. You know, my father would walk around, look at this boy. Every time you go to the grocery store, you know the white man is playing with your mind. You gotta watch this. This is all subconscious, all subliminal. Look at this. Ask yourself, why must I be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? <laughs> you see? Right there. See, they're trying to say the black cereal make you crazy. <laughs> See what's going on here? The Frosted Flakes, they're white, they're great. <laughs> Cocoa Puffs make you nutty. Look at this here. Look at this rice. It's just regular rice, but it's brown, so they call it wild rice. Look at these. Look at these olives. Why are these black olives in a can? You see that? 
The green olives, they're not in a can. The green olives in a jar. Why they have to lock these black olives up? They're trying to tell you, you're cuckoo, you're too wild, and you need to be locked up. That's Warren Hutcherson on his experience with Christmas as a child.